All right, I haven't been on in a while, but I'm excited to talk about this. I kind of went on a little bit of a rant in one of our community webinars about where I want to go with the 500th episode of the Half Size Me podcast. And one of the things I really was uh, drawn to share is, well, first off, this, this idea came from a day where I had a very serendipitous situation. I had a client send me a message about her journey and I had journaled in my notebook that day what I would tell somebody who was just starting out, just beginning. I have lost my weight and been keeping it off since 2006. I have been coaching clients full time, one on one for over six years, hundreds of women. I have community members. I'm in this soup 24 <laughs> seven. And the reason that's important to know is what I see is not what you see. What I see is the consistent same issues over and over and over again. The same people are falling into the same pits over and over again, regardless of how much weight they have to lose or want to lose, regardless of the methodology that they're using to get there. There's like these kind of consistent pitfalls that I want to help people better see and have a different idea of how to work through them. So today we're going to talk about why the scale is not required for this journey. And I would encourage you to check it at the door because if you know how much you weigh, you know the habits that have been supporting you either staying at this weight or gaining weight, and you make a concerted effort, and you guys know I, I always talk about the two roads merging. I, I wish I could do it with my hands right now, but I can't because I'm holding my phone. You have the two roads, right? You have the what I'm willing to do with food for the rest of my life and what I'm willing to do with fitness. Now that part is super important because so many people are seeking for help outside of themselves. They want someone else to tell them what they should be eating. They want someone else to tell them what's the best workouts to be doing. And even if you aren't seeking it directly like that and you're taking in information and you feel you should be doing this workout, you should be eating this way, and you're putting that pressure on yourself, you're not looking internal. What do you want your life to look like in the next five, 10, 20 years? What is it you want your eating to look like? When you think about what you're doing now, where do you want to go? When you think about what you're doing with your fitness, where do you want to go? Not what does someone else tell you you should be doing. So once you know where you are weight wise, you know the behaviors and habits you have. You then start out on a journey, you burn your boat, pew, pew, I'm not going back to that anymore. Whatever that was, not doing it. I'm gonna progressively change over time. Maybe eat out less, drink a little less wine, eat a little bit more vegetables, take and start portioning out my food. Whatever that looks like for you, it's going to change your weight. It can't not change your weight. As long as you're progressing in a positive direction, and here's the thing, there is no woman that I've ever met that can tell me, I don't know. Like, if you're having three chocolate bars during the day, and I say, what's something that's holding you back? Most of you are gonna be like, hey, I'm eating three chocolate bars during the day. Okay, you know, <laughs> you know. Like, I ask women this all the time. If, if I'm gonna coach you, we have a consultation call. I ask these questions. What is the thing you're doing on a weekly basis that's not serving you? I've never had someone tell me, I don't know. Everyone knows. You know the things that hold you back. There is no special plan, program, uh, way of doing this that you don't already internally know what needs to change for you. So if you decide to burn the boat, gonna change the habits. If you never step on that plastic scale again until a year goes by, you're still on your journey. Like there is, when we create a man-made weight goal, BMI chart, doctor, WW, whatever, we now have a marker we believe we should hit. As long as that's driving you, you will usually sacrifice things prematurely or that you're really not willing to sustain to get there. Whereas if you let your weight become a naturally occurring goal weight, 
which is, okay, I'm willing to give up eating out this many times. I'm willing to give up drinking this many alcoholic beverages. I'm willing to add in protein at every meal. I'm willing to add in vegetables at every meal. I'm willing to start going for a daily walk. And that works you, works you, works you down the path. Wherever the weight goes, that's your naturally occurring goal weight. It is not a man-made goal weight, which is somebody else telling you where you have to go. And this is why I typically hear from people, oh, I just want to get this last 20 pounds off. Maybe that's not where you need to be, right? Like if your habits don't support it, and let's just say you do truly believe you should be there and you give up a bunch of stuff and then you start to come back up, maybe that wasn't where you were meant to be, right? So we don't, if we just allow our weight to settle wherever the change of habits takes you, that will be a more sustainable, enjoyable weight for you. It never requires a scale because all those habit changes that I just shared with you, protein, vegetables, walking, none of that the scale does, okay? So the scale just gives you a reflection back of how much you weigh in any given moment. If you drink a couple cups of water, it's gonna change. What you're really wanting to assess is what do my habits look like? So I'm gonna encourage you whether you literally or, or, or uh, figuratively stay away from the scale, stay away from the scale. It's not gonna do this journey for you. You need to go internal. What am I doing that doesn't serve me? Start changing it, make habit list, start moving yourself forward. Let your goal weight become a naturally occurring goal weight based on your changes and what you're willing to do so you can sustain it for the long haul. And then wherever the weight settles, it settles, but you will be happier because there's a big part of this journey not many people are talking about, which is, yes, you achieve a goal weight, but if you're sacrificing happiness and connection to others that you love and you're cutting things out of your life, we don't want that either. You know, really for the long term, most people don't want to live a life like that. What you do has to be enjoyable, livable, so you can have a full fun, wonderful, healthy life. You guys have a great day. Please like and subscribe. I will talk to you soon.